One of the first things Jesus did when he came into Jerusalem, his final week of his ministry, was to cleanse the temple. It was the very first thing he did as he began that Passion Week. And he came in, he threw out the money changers, he overturned the tables. He said, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you've made it into a den of thieves. And Jesus then, after he cleansed the temple, he began teaching daily in the temple. And the Pharisees and the scribes and the chief priests, they came to Jesus and they challenged him. They said, by what authority are you doing these things? What right do you have to come in here and just turn everything over and kick everybody out and you're acting like you own the place? What authority? What do you have to demonstrate that you have the right to do this? And Jesus appeals not to some kind of earthly credential, but he appeals to a prophetic credential, John the Baptist. And he says, I'll answer your question if you answer mine. By whose authority did John the Baptist do the things he did? And Jesus really put them in an awkward position because they had refused John's authority, but they knew that the people honored John as a prophet. And so they said, well, if we deny John's authority, the people will stone us. But if we acknowledge his prophetic authority, then Jesus will say, why didn't you listen to him? So they said, well, we can't answer. We don't know. And Jesus said, well, then I won't answer your question either. And what we see is Jesus doesn't appeal to some natural credential. For example, his credentials are impeccable. His genealogy demonstrates that he is in line for the Messiah. He is of the son of David. He is born in Bethlehem, just as the scriptures prophesied. Jesus amazingly fulfills all of the prophecies concerning the first coming of the Messiah. And yet somehow God allows this to be obscured. Jesus is born in Bethlehem, as the scripture prophesies concerning the Messiah, and yet he grows up in Nazareth. And so when people begin to believe that he is the Messiah, others doubt because they say, he's from Nazareth. No prophet comes out of Nazareth. They're assuming the Messiah must come from Bethlehem. They don't realize that Jesus is from Bethlehem. And what we see is that God doesn't let us off that easy by proving to us or begging us to believe in him, proving his own credentials. Jesus doesn't need to prove anything to anybody. Instead, he comes not to ask for our vote. He comes to challenge us. Who do men say that I am? And you have to be preconditioned with humility, with repentance, with faith, with a longing in your heart to be right with God so that when Messiah comes you recognize Him. That was the issue with Jesus' first coming. People couldn't recognize Him for who He was and He didn't allow them to see Him in His glory. Remember, He only allowed three people to see Him on the Mount of Transfiguration, transfigured in His glory. If he had allowed all of Israel to see him transfigured like that, of course everyone would have believed in him. But he comes in humility to challenge us. His authority is a prophetic authority. Just as John the Baptist comes and he preaches, repent for the kingdom of God is near. Jesus comes preaching the same message, repent for the kingdom of God is near. And he appeals to a prophetic authority. We see then this final week of Jesus, his Passion Week. As he comes, he's proclaimed by his disciples to be the Messiah. They're singing, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Pharisees are offended that the disciples are acknowledging Jesus as Messiah. And so they tell Jesus, rebuke your disciples. And Jesus won't. He says, I tell you, if I tell them to be silent, the rocks themselves will cry out. It's because it is this great eschatological moment of the first coming of the Messiah. He comes as king. He presents himself as king. And yet they refuse him as their Messiah. Now it's significant that we see the very first thing he does is cleanse the temple. What we see then is that Jesus comes not seeking our approval, but coming to cleanse the temple. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Remember the Bible says that judgment must begin with the house of God. And the very first thing Jesus does is cleanse the temple. Why? It's because he's not going to tolerate spiritual compromise. He's not coming to accommodate our sinful lifestyles. He's coming to challenge them, to rebuke them, and to cleanse us from the inside out.